Karaoke, we are live. Finally, we are doing it live. Hello. So, oh, I hate you. This is what happened. Here are the things. I, this is my first stream. This is my first live. And I'm using my phone. Okay. Not TMI. Just giving you the lowdown. Um, oh, let me fix one thing. Oh, I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. Oh, that's so much better. Love it. Love it. So here's the lowdown, essentially. I streamed. I was really excited a few hours ago for two whole hours. And it didn't work. It didn't save. Um, I ended the stream and then it was like network error and I was like, oh, that's fun. Um, so it's fine. I did a couple test runs. It should be good now, but I guess don't use your back facing camera or cameras on your phone to stream because it's not going to work because the front facing is working just fine now. So I wanted it to be organic and now it's only going to be somewhat organic. It still will be, but I... I don't like to practice and rehearse things because that's not what this is. We're not rehearsing here. Let me get my, my lip gloss, my Vaseline. Right by my side. Amazing. And also, I don't like looking at myself. And now I have my face right in front of me. And that makes me uncomfortable. Hello. My name is Anna. And basically, what this is, the No Club, is... An attempt for me to reclaim my voice. That's one piece of this pie. Um, a little bit of backstory about me. I am a performer. I wouldn't say I currently am one. I've stopped. I've taken about five years or so off. But I started performing when I was four years old. Little wee four-year-old doing like improv games, um, good times. But I spent most of my life in that arena, always pushing myself to like my boundaries of self-expression, putting myself out there. And I was an extremely anxious kid. And I also, and I know I'm very, very lucky with this, I never dealt with um, feeling insecure, self-doubt. I was anxious, but I wasn't insecure. I didn't doubt myself and I never suffered with depression. Wow. Fucking pat on the back. Clap, clap. Aren't you fucking special? Until I got into the real world. And as we all know, or as maybe I, I, I think, th I think, I think anybody who's watching right now hopefully realizes how fucked the world is and how scary it is and how everything in school is just, you know, it doesn't, nothing sets you up for the reality of <laughs> paying taxes and getting a mortgage and working nine to five and slaving away to the capitalist machine, and yada, 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 and all the bullshit that comes with it and how America's a scam. And it's, it's a lot. Anyway, over the past few years, not just the pandemic, but even before that, I was feeling I was losing my sense of self, questioning, you know, if I ever even had one to begin with because I was always playing characters was do I even really know who I am you know a midlife crisis kind of vibe and uh I stepped away from performing but I thought that the only way to me for me to like figure myself out I guess was to isolate and that was before the pandemic and then once that hit it was even more isolation and more self-doubt and really just feeling this hopelessness, this worthlessness, this not feeling like my voice was worthy to be shared, that my thoughts were valuable, that I, you know, had a place in this world or had a right to think, a right to express. And I know that sounds ridiculous and I know it's not true, but it's just how I felt and how I still feel and because currently in my life, I don't have a core friend group anymore. I don't have like uh, 
classes and discussions and places where I can go and I can share my ideas, share my thoughts and speak openly, just speak, just use my voice. Uh, I've been feeling pretty, um, you know, pretty alone. And I also know that when you don't kind of, when you don't use it, you lose it. And it's important to practice certain skills and practicing speaking, using your voice. Uh, it's, it's, it's important to do for your autonomy, for your right to just share your ideas and thoughts and with crippling self-doubt. And you hear that a lot, that term, just like, and that adjective used for self-doubt, crippling self-doubt. But like, do we ever actually really think about what that is and what that means and what that looks like? And what it means that you literally every single move you make, you question. Every word that comes out of your mouth, you you question. Um, at least that's what it's like for me to have that crippling self-doubt. And this year, I am doing this stream for a couple reasons and that's one of them is to reclaim my voice and gain more knowledge and feel confident in speaking that knowledge and things that uh, I, ha I know nothing about I will say I am a self-proclaimed stupid person <laughs> I'm not an idiot I do idiotic things sometimes indefinitely but I don't know why I just censored myself indefinitely I could say fucking and I will, but I, I don't want to, I don't want to censor myself anymore. <laughs> like I just did. I want to speak my mind, but in my mind is just like crippling self-doubt. And I, I, the only way that I know how to fight it as an ex performer is by using my voice. It's also the way that I learn. It might be the way that you learn as well. When I'm reading something that's nonfiction right in front of me, the information, honestly, unless I have a reason to use that, whether it's for school, a project, which I am no longer in, I've been out of school for quite some time, or it's for something at work, which no, I'm, I'm not doing anything that requires research right now. Uh, that's the only time that I will be able to keep that information if I'm just reading it off the page and then like typing it out and sending it on its way. But it doesn't stay in my brain. I don't learn that way. The, the next way that I learn, which is not the best way for me, but it is the next way, is by listening. Listening to audiobooks, listening to podcasts, listening to something like this, which I've been doing for the past few years, and it's been so enlightening. But now I'm at this next stage where I really need to start implementing this information um, and seeking out this information for myself through the way that I learn best, and the way that I learn best is through using my voice. Literally, it may not be my words, but it, they are going to be it, basically the words are going to be a catalyst for my own thoughts, which I need to discover because I feel like my brain has been turning into mush, just like a mushy, you know, instant mashed potato, not even, not even buttery, just dry, nothing. And it, it's, it's, it's a terrible feeling to feel so empty and you know I, and I, I'm just like why is this happening where is this coming from and I know for certain it's because I've been out of practice on using my speaking voice and sharing my thoughts but it's also because of the short form entertainment that I've been consuming day in and day out yes and talking TikTok is the main one seeing things for 10 15 seconds just like really intense you're, cr you're crying your eyes out and then the next thing you know you're just like so happy and elated and you're seeing like the best thing you've ever seen all day or like a cat video comes up next and then something really interesting about like a new recipe or a new workout thing or just so much information all at once that my brain feels like it's on overload so it like shuts down do you feel the same? Now, there is nobody watching this right now. It says there's one viewer, but I don't, I think that might just be me. You know what I mean? I don't, I don't know how this works <laughs> because I'm assuming nobody's watching right now, but there's nobody watching because I did not tell anyone that I was doing this, that I'm starting this because I really just want to test it out. 
And if it goes well, if I feel good about it, if I feel like it's worthwhile, good for my mental health. I want this to be good for my mental health, which is so fucking strange. Kind of an oxymoron to go on the internet for your mental health when I'm talking about how bad the internet is. Certain aspects of it. There's good and bad with everything. We don't live in a black and white world. We live in gray areas. And the internet is definitely a gray area. And I know for certain that this will, this will help me in my confidence and finding my voice again and believing in myself. And that's, that's the main thing. The second piece is understanding why the world is the way that it is. Why men hate women so vehemently, where that comes from, understanding misogyny, understanding racism, understanding the 1%. It's like tough topics. I'm not like really excited to learn, but I know I need to. I want to. I want to. See. I do now have this thirst for knowledge because I feel this vast emptiness within myself of of not knowing, but being so fucking angry because I know deep down this is wrong and this is wrong and this institution is fucked up and that's corrupt and everything's corrupt, you know. And so it is very overwhelming and that can shut you down and that can immobilize you as well. And I feel that I've certainly um, been immobilized by all the information every single day. It's just like nothing gets better. And it's just like keeps getting worse and worse. But has it always been bad? I think it has. I think it's always been a fight. I think part of living, my understanding of it is that, yeah, life is suffering. There's always going to be pain uncomfortable and suffering coupled into one and there's always going to be work work of some kind whether it's work to get the money to keep the house to do the thing to survive yep that's the fucking system I wish it wasn't but it is or if we didn't have that system and we had another one it's going to be the work outside to to also to survive just survive in a different way get the food build the house all that stuff so there's always going to be pain and there's always going to be work and I can't outrun them, but I can choose the best way to, to feel that pain and the best way to work that's going to benefit me in this lifetime. And the work that I want to do is on my brain and on my self-expression. So I want, I, I want to know more. I want to have an understanding, even though these topics are going to be difficult. Now, is this a privilege to have this moment right here? Duh. Fucking duh. Can I afford to be doing this streaming service right now? No. Hell fucking no. Sorry if that note um, cracks some windows. No. But I know that I'm in a privileged enough position to to try new things because I have loving and supportive parents. Um, I just moved back uh, to New York, which I told myself I was not going to do, but I am here. So it's, it's actually going quite well, except the whole job situation is pretty brutal right now. Um, if you have any job recommendations, let me know. <laughs> but not getting into that. It is a privilege to be able to sit here and read. It's a privilege to be able to read, to consume knowledge um, whether it's just for fun to relax after a long day a lot of people are not granted that time most people are don't have that kind of time to turn their brains off and to enjoy an outlet of escapism and creativity but I'm not doing this to escape yes I am doing this a little bit for my own creativity which I fucking need and don't you dare take that from me don't you take it I'm certainly not doing it to escape. If anything, I'm doing it to dive deeper into the bullshit that is this world. And yeah, I want to fucking know. I want to know. And I want to bring you along with this, this journey because again, I don't, I don't retain information if I am not working through it, if I am not speaking it aloud, if I am not discussing it. Now, I don't have you here actually speaking with me. So the discussion is pretty one-sided. Even, I know I have no, no chatters yet, but when I hopefully get some, it's still not going to be 
the most engaging as if you were right in the room. But for me right now, as I'm learning, literally as I'm learning, not just how to do all this and stream and everything, but learning new pieces of information, this feels the safest for me because I feel sometimes unsafe in my lack of knowing. Do you know what I mean? When you're in a conversation with somebody and you're... Oh, hold for siren. I'm in New York. That's a... I don't know if you can see that um, painting back there. It's really awesome. I'm going to hang it up. Probably going to move it soon. But um, for right now, it's right there. It's Superman giving the finger. Um, my girlfriend's brother gave that to her. So it's pretty cute. Cool. But yes, I feel unsafe in this unknowing when I have discussions with people that are more knowledgeable or claim to be more knowledgeable, but perhaps aren't. And I just don't have the practice of fucking using my voice anymore and just like I just choose to shut down more often than I choose to speak up and speak out and that is not me that is not who I who I used to be I want to reclaim that I want to bring that back into my life so here we go let's let's fucking learn let's get let's get smart let's get smart together now a couple a couple rules a couple things I don't know how you learn um, we're going to be reading books and discussing at the exact same time. Oh, I just got somebody. Hi. No, not interested in that. I am choosing to not promote my stream yet until after this, but I appreciate that. So I'm going to be reading feminism, philosophy, all uh, about white supremacy, gender inequality, the patriarchy, capitalism, lots of different topics, tough things. And all these books that I'm reading, I have never read before. Okay, let's keep that in mind. Am I, you know, doing audiobooks right now? No, no, I'm not. Am I a seasoned, you know, vocal coach or no, no, I'm not a voiceover actor. Um, maybe one day. Who knows? But right now, no, I feel actually slightly uncomfortable with this new practice, which again is exciting for me because I like new challenges. I like new things. It, it, I already feel like this is going, what has it been like 10 minutes or something? 15 minutes is pushing me out of my boundaries. I don't feel totally comfortable and that's a good thing. So because I'm new to the books and to the words, I'm not practicing it, them. I'm going to fuck up. I'm going to fuck up a lot. I'm going to fuck up hard. And I want to get over the cringe. That is me. The stupidity of the moment. Because learning is messy. And I would like to ask for your grace. When you do come back and watch this video. If you're watching right now. Hello. Hi. How are you? Um... That was like a Jeffree Star, wasn't it? That was so weird. I watch way too much YouTube. Hi, hello. How are you? Um, but yes, please allow me some grace as I inevitably flub these words and mess up my sentences and not know how to pronounce certain words, okay? Don't be a motherfucking elitist being like, she didn't know how to say that? What a fucking stupid... I'm not watching this anymore. No, it's not what we're doing here. Um... Any word that I don't know or I don't know how to pronounce or maybe I do know what it is, but I've never even seen it written down. You know what I mean? Like the first time you read a uh, colonel, colonel, it's it's not right. English is just not right sometimes. And hopefully going through this, my vernacular will expand. My vocabulary bank will get bigger. Um, that's my hope also. So a, a lot of this, a lot, there's so much that I can gain from this new opportunity that I'm giving to myself. So I have my laptop over here. I will be stopping <laughs> when I don't know how to pronounce something or I don't know what the fuck something means. Just a little heads up. Also, this is my library. Hello. Gorgeous. I did pay the uh, YouTube premium for this. You're welcome. So you don't have the ads or anything. You just see the snow falling and uh, the library in the background. I also had my uh, kitty cat right over here. 
they have gone away. They have not gone astray. They were astray. They are now here to stay. Oh, bars! Bars! I will not apologize for who I am. Okay. Let's jump into a really easy read, an easy breezy read, nothing too serious. Trigger warning, sexual assault, violence, torture, um, just downright the worst, um, violence all against women. Men, explain things to me by Rebecca Solnit. Oh, shit. Now, I said I had never read, I'm not, not going to be reading any of these books prior to sharing the information here and reading these books and discussing these books with you. But this is the only one I have read. Oh my gosh, wait, hold on. My furnace is like squeaking. It sounds like a little rat, a little mouse. Have you ever watched the HRH collection on YouTube? Please, please go, please go. Watch one episode of Alex. She is out of her mind. I can't relate, uh, uh, but she's very entertaining. I got to turn this off though. It's squeaking like crazy. It shut off by itself. What do you know? What do you know? Okay. Men explain things to me. Here we go. Let's get into it. Let's get into it. So like I said, I have read this. Um, did I read it out loud? No. No, I did not. Oof. Um, but when I read this, I was like, Jesus Christ. I, I got to know more. I got to know more about why the world is. <laughs> so this is kind of like a catalyst again. I know I'm reusing that word. Maybe I can come up with a better word later on. Um, a jumping off point for this stream, for this club, the no club. Let's know together. Let's understand together. If you don't have time to read books, but you do have time to listen, then that's fucking great. And I hope you stick around and you're awesome. Let's get smart together. Okay, chapter one. Look at this. Okay, there it is. That is a woman ironing what seems to be her hair. Could also be her face. You know, she is just burning, burning herself alive, but looking very fabulous with those stretched hamstrings. Is she wearing heels? Of course she's wearing heels. This picture is very profound. And I must say... A lot of these sentences, even just like right off the bat, right in the beginning, the intro are quite profound. Men explain things to me. 2008. I still don't know why Sally and I bothered to go to that party in the forest slope above Aspen. The people were all older than us and dull in a distinguished way. Old enough that we, at 40-ish, passed as the occasion's young ladies. The house was great, if you like Ralph Lauren-style chalets. A rugged luxury cabin at 9,000 feet, complete with elk antlers. Ooh, I'm already getting very bad vibes. Lots of kilims, don't know what that means, and a wood-burning stove. That I approve of, that I like. We were preparing to leave when our host said, no. Stay a little longer so I can talk to you. He was an imposing man who'd made a lot of money. Never a good sign, and I think we know where this is going. He kept us waiting while the other guests drifted out into the summer night and then sat us down at his authentically grainy wood table. That's interesting. And said to me, So, I hear you've written a couple books. I replied, Several, actually. He said in the way you encourage your friends, 17-year-old, to describe flute practice. And what are they about? They were actually about quite a few different things. The six or seven out by then, uh, but I began to speak only of the most recent on that summer day in 2003. River of Shadows, Edward... Mowbridge, I might be mispronouncing that. Like, let's be honest. It's spelled E A D W E A R D. Edward? Edward? It's a very fancy way of saying, like, Edward. Edward, Mowbridge, and the technological Wild West. 
my book on the annihilation of time and space and the industrialization of everyday life. He cut me off soon after I mentioned Mulbridge. Quote, and have you heard about the very important Mulbridge book that came out this year? So caught up was I in my assigned role as ingenue that I was perfectly willing to entertain the possibility that another book on the same subject had come out simultaneously, and I somehow missed it. He was already telling me about the very important book with that smug look I know so well in a man holding forth, eyes fixed on the fuzzy far horizon of his own authority. I love that concept of someone holding forth. Tell me, darling, have you experienced it as well? Somebody who <clears throat> may be very intelligent, but, you know, you may actually know a lot more on the subject or have a lot more uh, firsthand experience on something, but they are so mm, aggressive in their you know, in the way that they present their information and they hold forth and they're so steadfast and they're just like really aggressive. And it's like, they're right and you're wrong and they know more. God, it's a fucking uncomfortable situation. And I feel like I always get myself into spaces where that happens. And I'm kind of always the underdog because of this self-doubt and using my voice and speaking up and feeling confident in sharing what I do know. Um, I, I, I do have a kind of a, a bit of trauma, I guess, issues when it comes to like <sighs> so much of the patriarchy, so much, so much, but definitely in a theater too. And like being that ingenue character and just kind of being there to uh, absorb information and listen, but never to participate, kind of just be a pretty face sometimes. Uh, I know what that feels like. I've gotten paid to do that role. <clears throat> a lot of performing, um, you know, television, uh, commercials, stuff like that for women. A lot of it is, is just, is just that. So where were we? I actually don't know. Where were we? I'm going to lose my place a lot. <laughs> Here we go. <clears throat> Here, let me just say that my life is well sprinkled with lovely men. With a long succession of editors who have, since I was young, listened to and encouraged and published me. With my infinitely generous younger brother, with splendid friends, of whom it can be said, like the clerk in the Canterbury Tales, I still remember from Miss, Mr. Palin's class of Chaucer, gladly would he learn and gladly teach. <clears throat> Interesting. Still, oh, did you hear my knee? Did you hear my knee crack? I'm old. Er, than maybe you. So I'm not old. I'm just older. The knees, they do things sometimes. <laughs> Still, there are these other men too. So Mr. Very Important was going on smugly about this book I should have known when Sally interrupted him to say, that's her book. Or tried to interrupt him anyway. But he just continued on his way. She had to say, that's her book. Three or four times before he finally took it in. And then, as if in a 19th century novel, he went ashen. That I was indeed the author of the very important book, it turned out, he hadn't read. Wouldn't you fucking know it? I am also a victim of this. I say things once I hear them, and I'm like, oh my god, that's shocking. And like, even if I haven't totally done the research... Um, then people are like, oh, tell me more. I want to know. Oh, my God, where did you where did you hear that? Tell me more about the situation. I'm like, oh, I, that, that's all I know. <laughs> Just those couple little factoids right there. Um, but this is great. He's getting called out. I love it. Uh, that he hadn't read. Just read about in the New York Times book review a few months earlier. So confused the neat categories into which his world was sorted that he was stunned speechless for a moment before he began holding forth again of course being women we were politely out of earshot before we started laughing and we've never really stopped i will say i am getting a lot more you know confident with telling people when they're being little shits and i will not let up on hurting your feelings if it's warranted i will hurt your feelings you know what i mean if you're acting acting out you're saying some <clears throat> out of pocket stuff I'm going to laugh in your face or I'm going to make you feel like the little 
buffoon you are. Again, I am a self-proclaimed stupid person just because I don't know a lot, okay? doesn't mean I can't grasp grasp concepts so that I don't want to know. It's just that I am having trouble retaining the information, okay, sweetheart? We're going to fix it. We're going to fix it this year because I want it. I want it back. I like incidents of that sort when forces that are usually so sneaky and hard to point out slither out of the grass and are as obvious as, say, an anaconda that's eaten a cow or an elephant turd on the carpet. Great sentence. Okay. Now we have a heading. The slippery slope of silencing. Oh, of silencings. Plural. Yes, people of both genders pop up at events to hold forth on irrelevant things and conspiracy theories. But the out and out confrontational confidence of the totally ignorant is, in my experience, gendered. Men explain things to me and other women, whether or not they know what they're talking about. Some men. See what you did there? Some men. All right. Don't get your your knickers in a bunch, boys. Every woman knows what I'm talking about. It's the presumption that makes it hard at times for any woman in any... That keeps women... up and from being heard when they dare that crushes young women into silence by indicating the way harassment on the street does that this is not their world it trains us in self-doubt and self-limitation just as it exercises men's unsupported overconfidence if you've been hearing a lot about the audacity of men we're gonna understand it a little bit better after these books let me tell you what I wouldn't be surprised if part of the trajectory of American politics since 2001 was shaped by, say, the inability to hear Colleen Rowley, who, who is she? I don't know. The FBI woman who issued those early warnings about Al-Qaeda. Okay. I was a little young then, not gonna lie. It's like, where were you when the towers fell? I do remember where I was, but didn't really feel like that big of a deal because I was, I was young. I was a young kid. Um... The FBI woman who issued, yes, and it was certainly shaped by a Bush administration to which you couldn't tell anything, including that Iraq had no links to Al-Qaeda and no WMDs or that the war was not going to be a, quote, cakewalk. Who the fuck said cakewalk? Did did George Bush say cakewalk? You know, I I believe it. You know, fool me once, shame on you, fool me twice. Can't get, can't get, you can't get fooled again. I think that's what he said. Something like that. I don't know. I don't ever think about the guy. Let's be honest. Even male experts couldn't penetrate the fortress of its smugness. Arrogance might have had something to do with the war, but this syndrome is a war that nearly every woman faces every day. A war within herself. Whew. A belief in her superfluity? Superfluity? I have never read this word or heard it in my life. It's super and then fluidy. Let's look it up. Looking up time. Oh my lord. Oh gosh, I have put in my password and everything. You all have the same passwords for everything? I do, pretty much. I can't have a bunch of fake different passwords. I don't know what the hell is going on. Let's hear, let's listen to how it's saying. How do we say it? Superfluity. Superfluity. It doesn't really roll off the tongue. Superfluity. It's supposed to be fluid, but when you read it, it's like, it seems like it should be superfluous, but it's superfluity. Superfluity. Okay. And it means an unnecessarily or excessively large amount or number of something. A superfluity of unoccupied time is their example. When I was a kid, I was really good at spelling bee. I'm talking like second grade. Okay, past that? No. Not not past the second grade level. <laughs> no, I did. I got further. I got further in my, you know, academic career. But superfluity. A belief in her superfluity. Interesting. 
an invitation to silence, one from which a fairly nice career as a writer, with a lot of research and facts correctly deployed, has not entirely freed me. After all, there was a moment there when I was willing to let Mr. Important and his overweening confidence bowl over my more shaky certainty. Mm -hmm. Even when you know, you know, you still feel that inkling of doubt. And when you're so used to holding space for others to feel their feelings, express, use their voice, yada, 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 uh, make other people feel comfortable, especially because going through the world as a woman or being seen as a woman, which, you know, I... I am non-binary. Some days I feel like a woman, but that's probably just because other people are viewing me and I'm still having that battle. Um, but I don't feel that way. But other people do. And it's like this unspoken agreement that our job is to make you feel more comfortable. Um, everyone, everyone else is supposed to feel more comfortable than you. And just, I mean, it's just in the way that we were told we're supposed to dress is more uncomfortable. The things that we have to do to prepare ourselves to be seen by the world is more uncomfortable. The makeup, the hair, the this, the that, the nails, the, you know, yes, it's self-expression and yes, it's art and yes, it's creativity. And there, like I said, we live in a gray world, not a black and white world. It's not this and that, but it's still, you can't deny a lot of the root of these things is to be, altering yourself and to be uncomfortable but I gotta say you know men wore makeup men wore wigs men wore heels men wore heels first they were for horseback riding but once you know once you saw like you know how, how uncomfortable it made women it's like oh slap those suckers on her all the time we want to see those legs that's all she's worth right fucked up absolutely fucked up but yes, making everybody else feel comfortable around you, smiling. You know, we've learned how to de-escalate situations by being more agreeable. <clears throat> and also, so we don't get hurt. And so we don't get insulted. And so we don't get talked down to and, and you know, just fucking abused, essentially. Let's continue. Don't forget that I've had a lot more confirmation of my right to think and speak than most women. And I've learned that a certain amount of self-doubt is a good tool for correcting, understanding, listening, and progressing. Though too much is paralyzing and total self-confidence produces ignorant idiots. <laughs> Who would you say is an ignorant idiot? Who's a little bit too self-confident, is too much self-confidence. Not just an arrogant idiot. Did I say ignorant? Also that, but arrogant, arrogant idiot is what she has here. Who would you say? There's a laundry list of people, but the first one that's coming to my head is Donald Trump. <laughs> arrogant idiot. There's a happy medium between these poles to which the genders have been pushed. A warm equatorial belt of give and take where we should all meet. More extreme versions of our situation exist in, for example, those Middle Eastern countries where women's testimony has no legal standing so that a woman can't testify that she was raped without a male witness to counter the male rapist. Yeah, that's going to really fucking work, which there rarely is. Credibility is a basic survival tool. Credibility is a basic survival tool when it comes to women when it comes to men though you actually don't need to be credible to be believed that's the fucking scary part when I was very young and just beginning to get what feminism was about and why it was necessary I had a boyfriend whose uncle was a nuclear physicist I feel like she's making up this story just because you only hear like nuclear physicist and like jokes and and fables and tales but nah that's that's pretty rad never met a nuclear physicist <clears throat> One Christmas, he was telling as though it were a light and amusing subject how a neighbor's wife in his suburban bomb-making community had come running out of her house naked in the middle of the night screaming that her husband was trying to kill her. 
How? I asked. Did you know that he wasn't trying to kill her? He explained patiently that they were respectable, middle-class people. Therefore, her husband trying to kill her was simply not a credible explanation for her fleeing the house, yelling that her husband was trying to kill her, that she was crazy. On the other hand, even getting a restraining order, a fairly new legal tool, requires acquiring the credibility to convince the courts that some guy is a menace and then getting the cops to enforce it. Yeah, good luck with that. Good luck. Restraining orders often don't work anyway. Violence is one way to silence people, to deny their voice and their credibility, to assert your right to control over their right to exist. Let's read that one one more time because that was pretty profound, that sentence. Violence is one way to silence people, to deny their voice and their credibility, to assert your right to control over their right to exist. I need a sip of water after that. That one hits. These motherfuckers are out here. These men are out here thinking that we just don't even, we don't even have a right to exist. And they get us believing it in small ways and uh, knocking us down. Just telling us that we're not good enough. The whole system tells us that we're not worthy. We're never enough. Never enough. And you know, patriarchy, I mean, if you're on, if you're on game, you're on the know, you understand it. You understand it a little bit enough to agree with this statement I'm about to make. Patriarchy hurts everyone. Uh, not just men. I mean, not just women, but men too. Duh. Because men are more than their bank accounts. But the patriarchy doesn't see it that way. Beth doesn't see it that way. Nah, nah, nah. That's all you're good for here in this game. Doesn't that fucking suck? Yeah. Don't feel so good. Okay. Man, this is a crazy world. About three women a day, a day, are murdered by spouses or ex-spouses in this country, this country being the United States. Now, I know we hear statistics, we hear factoids all the time. There's just like a slew, an onset of really shitty information being hurled at us at all hours of the day. And we become desensitized to it because we consume so much of it. But we have to find a way to not become desensitized to it. And perhaps that is stepping away from the news for a little bit, engaging in other things, but never hearing this and being okay with it. The second it starts to be okay, and that's just the way things are, and that's just how it is, we're in some, I mean, it might be too late. 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 But this book, when I first read it, I was in tears. You know what I mean? I'm not like trying to, pat myself on the back and saying like oh my god I was like so emotionally affected by it and like wow look at me I'm such a good person because I because I care about uh, humanity that's not what I'm doing here I'm just saying I have not become I'm happy to know that I have not become completely desensitized to it all because I know it's a lot it's a fucking lot and <sighs> we gotta know the truth gotta know the truth because that's all we have what they don't control the government, the 1%, you know, anybody who is above you, what they don't control, they can't control, they can a little bit here and there, but you can take it back, are your thoughts, your mind, what you choose to focus on, everything that is in here. Your mind is a muscle, so you need to exercise it, to expand it, and I have been actively choosing to do it in in silence and I've been suffering for it and I have to use my voice now I have to seek out more information but I have to do it in a way that's healthier for me and this lord this is so much this is so much healthier because I feel safe here I feel safe even though you're here too you're not in the room with me being able to be like you know what I don't agree with that I don't agree with that like I'm not I'm not at that stage yet I'm not ready yet to be 
speaking out. Yeah, I'm still fucking I'm still fucking scared because I want to have enough uh, knowledge in my arsenal. So I could throw down, I could throw down these, the gauntlet of not even debate, but just fucking discussion. Okay. I am worthy of thoughts. Thank you very much. At the heart of the struggle of feminism is to give rape, date rape, marital rape, domestic violence, and workplace sexual harassment legal standing as crimes has been the necessity of making women credible and audible. Hmm. I tend to believe that women acquired the status of human beings when these kinds of acts started to be taken seriously. That is really fucked up, y'all. Like, that's really fucked up. If you th- that, not if you think about it. That's just, you don't have to think about it. Just let those words sink in. I tend to believe that women acquired the status of human beings when these kinds of acts started to be taken seriously. And when they are not taken seriously, like how you see every other fucking day in this country, all over the world, how it's just another random occurrence that happens just like breathing fucking air that women get tortured and women get abused and this is just how the fucking world is and... (sighs) we're not viewed as human beings and that is not right that is not true so what the fuck are we gonna do about it i am down for the matriarch i am down for it i'm in i'm signed up i'm signed the fuck up anything i need to to do to revolt i'm in this is gonna be part of it for me getting my confidence back up not being afraid of my fear of looking like a fool. Matriarch, I'm signed up. I'm ready to revolt. Because <laughs> this, this is fucking, this is, I, I can't do it anymore. <sighs> How many years has it been? I have no idea. That's, I, I almost wanted to go back and study begin to study the history of misogyny and the patriarchy but I'm afraid that it may have started not too long after the beginning of time you know what I mean the beginning of human existence is what I mean so any historians uh can you hook me up with like at least where to start because starting here is pretty fucking overwhelming and going back it's like I'll get back two years it's gonna take me like months and months which could could take me two years of my life with all the fucking knowledge I want to start from the beginning let's start from the very beginning very good place to start you know what I'm saying but that's for another day not right now legally from the Uh, sorry, when the big things that stop us and kill us were addressed legally from the mid-1970s on, well after, that is, my birth, and for anyone about to argue that workplace sexual intimidation isn't a life-or-death issue, remember that Marine Lance Corporal Maria Lauterbach, age 20, was apparently killed by her higher-ranking colleague one winter's night while she was waiting to testify that he raped her. The burned remains of her pregnant body were found in the fire pit in his backyard. Being told that categorically, he knows what he's talking about, and she doesn't. However minor a part of any given conversation perpetuates the ugliness of this world and holds back its light. After my book... Wanderlust came out in 2000, I found myself better able to resist being bullied out of my own perceptions and interpretations. That's what I'm talking about. Fucking yes. The gaslighting. On two occasions around that time, I objected to the behavior of a man, only to be told that the incidents hadn't happened at all. As I said, that I was subjective, delusional, overwrought, dishonest, in a nutshell, female. That kind of rhymed. It's a fucked up line, but it kind of rhymed. Nutshell, female. It's a, just, just saying. 
I hate that trope. And, you know, you hear it so often. It's just like, it's like, uh, studying any piece of history, it's just, it's difficult to go through the world as a woman. Um, it's more than difficult. Um, we are so fucking resilient for not burning this whole motherfucker to the ground. We're so fucking resilient. Because just like going through college, like reading plays, classic plays, it's just the women always getting absolutely the short end of the stick because of history, you know? Always having to get your dowry, having to get married, to have anything, to have property, to have any standing in life, you would need a motherfucking man. That is made up, folks. That is a social construct, kids. Okay? That is not natural. It's fucking weird. Oh, the subjugation is terrifying. So, most of my life, I would have doubted myself and backed down. Having public standing as a writer of history helped me stand my ground. This is what I'm talking about, too. I want to I wanna have access to this kind of confidence and strength but few women get that boost and billions of women must be out there on this seven billion person planet being told that they are not reliable witnesses to their own lives that the truth is not their property now or ever now this goes way beyond men explaining things but it's part of the same archipelago i have never heard that word archipelago Pause for Google definition and Google pronunciation. Oh, the magical Google. We're slaves to you, Google. I have literally never heard this word. Archipelago? Is that, I think it might be, I'm saying that wrong. Okay, so it's an area that contains a chain, an area that contains a chain. So in context, this goes way beyond men explaining things to me, but it's part of the same blank of arrogance, same chain of arrogance. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Now, how do you fucking pronounce it? Give me that. Give me that. Archipelago. Archipelago. No... No fucking way was I going to say that right. What's the, you know, what's the root of that word? Where's that come from? Archipelago. Wow. It's part of the same archipelago of ignorance. It's a very fancy way of saying chain. Okay. Okay. I'm not scared of the knowledge. Give me newness. I can handle it. Men explain things to me still, and no man has ever apologized for explaining wrongly. Things that I know and they don't. Not yet. But according to the actu actual, actuarial, actuarial, I think it's actuarial. Let's double check because I also don't know what this word is. Okay. Wow. Two for one right here. actuarial actuarial okay that makes a lot more sense actually not yet but according to the actuarial tables and it's like what is the definition give to me relating relating to statistical calculation especially of life expectancy well that's interesting oh that's perfect that's exactly what she's talking about that is so fucking specific english is wild difficult challenging but there is a word that can describe the thing that it is or how you're feeling actuarial tables wow especially to life expect expectancy that's it i may have another 40 something years to live more or less so it could happen though i'm not holding my breath okay i need a sip of water and maybe a little bit of coffee it's late though i'm such a rebel oh 
Hold on, let me just warm up my hands by the fire. I'm really rich out here. Not just not just in experience, but in money too. Look at ooh, look at my library. Look at my beautiful home. Isn't it stunning? God, I love my life. I love leather bound books. I love leather seats. I just love interior design. All right. That's enough of that. Here we go. Another heading here. Women fighting on two fronts. A few years after the idiot in Aspen, I was in Berlin giving a talk with the Marxist writer Tariq Ali. Invited me out to a dinner that included a male writer, a translator, and three women a little younger than me who would remain deferential and mostly silent throughout the dinner. Tariq was great. Perhaps the translator was peeved that I insisted on playing a modest role in the conversation. But when I said something about how women strike for peace, which is, is a title um, capitalized women strike for peace, the extraordinary little known anti-nuclear and anti-war group founded in 1961 helped bring down the communist hunting House Committee of Un-American Activities, HUAC. Mr. Very Important Number Two sneered at me. HUAC, he insisted, didn't exist by the early 1960s, and anyway, no women's group played such a role in HUAC's downfall. His scorn was so withering, his confidence so aggressive, that arguing with him seemed a scary exercise in futility and an invitation to more insult. Yes, I can totally agree with experiencing that same exact situation you're talking to somebody and they are just nope that's not how it is nope I know more than you and just I get so exhausted immediately I'm like okay look it up yourself like I'm not if you're not gonna fucking listen to me you're not gonna believe me you're not gonna trust me you think you know more like it's you're clearly wrong I just give up essentially I'm like this conversation's over we're moving on or like I don't want to talk to you anymore basically (laughs) Because it's futile, because they don't actually want to listen. I think I was, or people just want to be right too, men especially. I think I was at nine books at that point, including one that drew from primary documents about, and uh, documents about, and interviews with a key member of Women Strike for Peace. But explaining men still assume I am, in some sort of obscene impregnation metaphor, an empty vessel to be filled with their wisdom and knowledge. That's, that's amazing, that sentence, because it is so fucked up. She's so intelligent, and she picks those words just perfectly to be from the male view, the male gaze, that, you know, they only see us as sexual beings, so she uses the word impregnation, impregnation metaphor, because when they see us, the ones that don't believe we are human beings or see that they are above us or that we we lack some ability to learn and to understand and to, you know, we're just not on the same level as they are. So fun. So fun. An empty, they that's what they see, an empty vessel to be filled with their wisdom and their knowledge and anything that you bring to the table is just not, it's not on par. Uh, that's a great way to to like talk about and describe when you have an idea uh you share that idea and then a guy takes credit for it it makes me think of like that scene in my big fat greek wedding um she's like well we're gonna make him think it was his idea and then he'll then he'll be good with it i know that's not the first time you've heard that trope i don't even know if that's a trope it's just like uh, something that happens (sighs) terrifying A Freudian would claim to know what they have and I lack. But intelligence is not situated in the crotch. (laughs) Even if you can write one of Virginia Woolf's, one of Virginia Woolf's long mellifluous, yeah, mellifluous, that's a good word, musical sentences about the subtle subjugation of women in the snow with your willy. (laughs) Which you can't, obviously. Obviously, sarcasm, but fucking, I love how she brings the comedy in this really dark and heavy material because um, it's not easy to read 
Um, I would like to say for everyone, but it's not easy for me going through the world as a woman um, to read. Back in my hotel room, I searched online a bit and found that Eric Bentley in his definitive history of the House Committee of Un-American Activities credits Women's Strike for Peace with, quote, striking the crucial blow in the fall of HUAC's Bastille, end quote, in the early 1960s. So I opened an essay on John Jacobs, Betty Friedman, and Rachel Carson. I don't know those people. For the nation, that's uh, italicized, uh, you know, it's, a, it's an essay she wrote, for the nation, with this interchange, in part as a shout out to one of the more unpleasant men who have explained things to me. Dude, if you're reading this, you're a carbuncle on the face of humanity and an obstacle to civilization. Feel the shame. I fucking love that. I love it. Burn, bitch. The battle with men who explain things has trampled down many women of my generation, of the up-and-coming generation we need so badly, here and in Pakistan and Bolivia and Java. Or is it Yava? You tell me. I am stupid. And also everywhere in the world that's not written on here. The list goes on and on. Not to speak, you know, especially Iran right now. Not to speak of the countless women who came before me and were not allowed into the laboratory. I always want to say it that way. Just such so fuck off if you don't like it. The laboratory or the library or the conversation or the revolution or even the category called human. <sighs> After all, Women's Strike for Peace was founded by women who were tired of making the coffee and doing the typing and not having any voice or decision-making role in the anti-nuclear movement of the 1950s. Now, most women fight wars on two fronts, one for whatever the putative topic is, and one simply for the right to speak, to have ideas, to be acknowledged, to be in possession of facts and truths, to have value, to be a human being. Things have gotten better, but this war won't end in my lifetime. I'm still fighting it for myself, certainly, but also for all those younger women who have something to say in the hope that they will get to say it. Yeah. So I think we're going to stop there for today for this first, first time. I just got to page 10. There is... 154 pages in here 150 something else true 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 oh in the acknowledge there's some acknowledgments as well but it's 154 pages when i go live again tomorrow if i'm feeling the confidence i think i can do it feeling the jazz feeling the good energy from using my voice it feels nice yeah i'm gonna be reading a lot more but think this that's a good place to start just the intro give you a taste of where we're headed um this is going to be intense it's going to be a lot of information i hope you're ready for it and maybe you know let me know what do you think maybe we should have some like <laughs> every 30 minutes a little dance break something to just like lighten the mood lighten the air slightly but i don't know how you learn best Maybe just listening is your jam. Maybe if you want to get a little more scholarly with the whole thing, um, you have the right to journal. You have the right to uh, write down any words that you want to use in your day-to-day -day life, any words you don't understand, anything you want to look up. You know, if you want to take it more to that arena so that you can keep, you can keep sentences and these concepts in your mind so that you can use them. Um, please do that because that's like almost as if we're discussing the same the same book right now you're here in the room um, so feel free feel literally free and that you have the right to know things to know what is happening in the world around you it is okay to crave knowledge and crave understanding and know that your thoughts and your voice are valid and they have meaning in this world and that you are a human being and you are more than your body and you are more than what you can provide for uh, capitalism and to men 
So that being said, I'll see y'all tomorrow. And I don't really want to say I love you because that's kind of weird. Um, but I'll say thank you, love. Z, plural. Or it's just when I say, okay, love. When I say that, you know that, that I mean that I'm saying like, uh, um, I love you. But I'm not going to say it. It's kind of weird. MG. I'm cringe. Get the fuck over it. I'm cringe. Doesn't even matter. Doesn't even matter. I tried really, really hard, team, to not look at myself. Now I'm looking at myself. Now I'm not. Now I'm looking at myself. It's really distracting. Uh, I wish I could use the back camera, but no, I have to use the front facing one. But it's okay. Just another battle that I gotta get the fuck over. All right. Have a great night, and I'll see you tomorrow. Thank you for joining the No Club. I'm your host, Anna. I'm not going to do that. Don't do that again. Don't do that again. No. Goodbye.